Monday Show with Alex V. A sports show for sports fans by a sports fan. And now, here is Alex V. All right, here we go. It is the Gay or Nay Show, the sports show for sports fans by a sports fan. Okay. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to get into today. Let's start with getting into some of the yay or nay questions that have come back on the Twitter page. And again, the address to the Twitter page, yay or nay podcast. You can find all of the questions up there. Got a bunch of brand new ones up there for you. But again, let's talk about some of the results that have recently come back. All right, let's start with here. Uh, let's see. We did the NFC. We're done with the NFC. We are moving on to the AFC. All right. AFC West. All right, who's going to win the AFC West? We've got the Broncos, we have the Chiefs, we have the Raiders, we have the Chargers, and what we have is nobody voted for the Broncos. Let's start off there. Absolutely nobody voted for the Broncos. The Chiefs coming in at 71%, so that is who you, the fans, are predicting is going to win the AFC West is the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Coming in second, and I'm kind of surprised about this, the Raiders at 17%. I am very, very shocked about that, to be honest. Uh, And coming in third would be the Chargers at 13%. So Chargers 13, Raiders 17, and the Chiefs at 71%. All right, the next one, who wins the AFC South? All right, this one comes back with the Houston Texans getting 5% of the vote. The Jaguars getting a whopping goose egg, zero. No votes in any way, shape, or form. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts get 11%. And of course the Tennessee Titans getting 84% of the vote. So there you have it. The fans believe the AFC South belongs to the Titans. All right, moving on to the next question. Who wins the AFC North? All right, starting off with the Ravens. They win with your votes at 52%. However, The Bengals came in with a whopping goose egg zero. The Browns and the Steelers both tied for second at 24% apiece. So the Ravens at 52, the Browns and the Steelers at 24%. All right, the next question that came back, who wins the AFC East? This one comes back with the Bills being the predominant winner with 79% of your vote. The Dolphins with 5% of your vote. The Patriots with 11% of your vote. And the Jets with 5% of your vote. Okay, here's another one. Can Mac Jones lead the Patriots to the playoffs? Now, we all know... (coughs) Oh, excuse me. We all know that Mac Jones took over as the starting quarterback. He was named last week as the starting quarterback... And there's been a lot of talk about whether he can or can't, will or won't lead the Patriots to the playoffs. A lot of people saying now that he's in charge, that now the Patriots are going to be a team to reckon with. Again, we had that conversation. I'm not going to revisit it right now. But here's what we have in regards to your votes. Yay, can Mac Jones lead the Patriots to the playoffs? Got 27% of the vote, which means nay, 73% of you say that Mac Jones cannot lead the Patriots to the playoffs. Now, the next question that came back, will Tampa Bay repeat as Super Bowl champs? This one I found interesting. You guys remember, I said that they will not, and here's what your votes came back saying. 100% of you said, nay, Tampa Bay will not repeat as the Super Bowl champs. All right, the next question that came back, Is Kansas City going back to the Super Bowl? Another conversation we have had. I posed it up on the Twitter page. Your guys' votes have come back. And what we have is 69 to 31. Nay, Kansas City will not be going back to the Super Bowl, which is exactly what I said, as well as I said that Tampa Bay will not repeat as the Super Bowl champs. Even though all the national guys want you to believe that both of those things are, in fact, going to happen. I am going to side with you, the fans. Both of those things are not going to happen. Okay, now, we all know game one of the NFL season is Thursday night, uh, Patriots-Cowboys. And so I asked, who's going to win the game? Here's what we got. 
67 to 33% say the Patriots are going to beat the Cowboys. Now, that is what the odds makers in Vegas have. That is also what all the national media guys are saying. The Patriots will beat the Cowboys. Time will tell. But again, your votes came back 67 to 33. Basically, you're agreeing with the national guys that the Patriots will, in fact, beat the Cowboys. Here's another one that I wanted to ask because, again, this has been a big debate. Uh, a lot of talk about, you know, the 49ers want to move off Jimmy G and in a hurry. So we got a 50-50 split on this particular question. Who is the better quarterback? Is it Jimmy G? Is it Trey Lance? Your votes came back. Small sample size. I have to put that out there. Small sample size on this. However, your votes came back again, 50-50. Split down the middle between Jimmy G and Trey Lance being the better quarterback. Of course, I, if I were the one to be the deal breaker, I would vote for Jimmy G being better than Trey Lance. Not saying that Trey's not going to be good. Not saying that eventually Trey won't be a starting quarterback in the NFL and be effective. But at this moment, at this point in time, I believe, no, he in fact is not ready and he's not going to be effective. All right. Now, AFC East, yesterday we focused on the West. We broke down the teams. We broke down the wins. We broke down the losses. We talk about who is, who isn't. So now we are going to break down the AFC East. Uh, first of all, let's do this. Let's talk about Vegas. In regards to the division, we have the Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins, the New England Patriots, and the New York Jets. This is the way that the odds makers are breaking the division down. Buffalo Bills are negative 160 to win the division, which means they are heavily favored. Miami and New England are both plus 350, which means essentially Vegas is saying that they are tied for second in regards to how they're going to come in at the end of the season. And, of course, there is the New York Jets. They are a whopping plus 2,500. And I wouldn't disagree with that at all because they got a lot of things to deal with. New quarterback, new coach, don't know what the coach is going to be, don't even know what the system is going to be. Uh, we don't know how good the quarterback is. A lot of people are, again, talking about this quarterback, saying that he's the real deal. We don't know. Okay, again, he's a pure rookie, and he's being thrown right in. Uh, no time sitting on the bench, no time sitting behind a veteran, no time sitting on a clipboard, listening and watching, seeing what does and doesn't work in real time with NFL full speed players right in front of his face. So I personally believe that's a huge disadvantage. I don't think that there will ever be a time where a rookie will come in and be able to take over a team and be able to lead them to the promised land straight out of college. However, there will always, because there always has been, if history has taught us anything, there will always be that one exception to the rule. I don't think that's where we are at this point in time. Okay, so let's break down the schedule for the Buffalo Bills. Let's talk wins. Let's talk losses. So week one, Pittsburgh Steelers. I am going to give the Bills a victory in week number one. Week number two. Miami Dolphins, I am going to give the Bills a win against the Dolphins. Week number three, Washington. I think, personally, this is going to be the upset special. Uh, they are arguably going to be the best defense, and Ryan Fitzpatrick, in the beginning of the season, his arm won't be tired. He won't be tired. People aren't really going to have enough tape on Washington with Ryan at the helm. So I think Washington can pull it off. Plus, they're going to be run heavy. And I'm not completely sold on Buffalo. I'm just not. So I am going to give the win to Washington in this particular game. Then you move on to the Houston Texans. I'm going to give Buffalo the win there. Then you move on to the Kansas City Chiefs. I am going to give the Chiefs the win there. The next game is going to be the Tennessee Titans. Uh, run heavy. I think this defense for Buffalo to me has a lot to prove. Again, keep in mind, I am not excited about any teams or anything that they did in the previous year because there was no such thing as home field advantage. And you had a bunch of teams walking into other places, playing well on the road. Matter of fact, I even heard the other day where they were saying that this is the first time in history where you had the highest percentage of victories on the road. Of course you did. 
you had no true home field advantage. You had no home crowd. So, of course, you did. It, they were glorified practices. That's all the games were last year. That's why I've been saying there's an asterisk next to the Super Bowl victory for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because you had no home field advantage. So this season is going to be where you find out what teams are made of. And Buffalo, again, while they did good, while their quarterback looked great, I think they made a mistake by hurrying up and giving him a deal. I think they should have waited to see what they were going to get out of him this year because, again, there was no home field advantage, and I think you didn't see the best. A lot of players opted out. COVID knocked a lot of players out. And, again, you're not getting everybody to play at 100% of their best when there is no crowd behind them, no momentum in games. We know momentum is big. We know momentum swings, and it happens in a multitude of ways, but crowd has a lot to do with it, and they were not there. So again, I do not subscribe to anything that happened last year. I just don't. Tennessee, I am going to give Tennessee the victory in this game. All right, moving on. Back to the Miami Dolphins. I'll give the Bills the victory there. Miami, another team, looked great. Uh, but again, not really sold on what they did last year. They did it with no fans in the stands, no home field advantage. Everybody was not playing to the optimum level. That is my problem with last year. And I'll say it once because I've said it a million times. That's why there is an asterisk next to the Super Bowl victory for Tampa Bay. Jacksonville, here we go. Uh, I, obvious. I mean, let's face it. That's obvious. They're going to get the win. The Jets, that's obvious. They're going to get the win. Indianapolis, here's a team that's definitely going to give Buffalo a lot of trouble, right? Uh, Carson Wentz is already looking good. I hear that he's going to start week one. Uh, Indianapolis has a great defense. They got a great run game. They got a good receiving core. You add Carson Wentz. You add the fact that he's got his former coach where he played the absolute best ball when he was with his former coach. Uh, I think Indianapolis can win this one, so I am going to give Indy the win. Uh, the New Orleans Saints. I don't believe in the Saints. I'm going to give the Bills the win. Uh, the Patriots. Uh, I'm not sold on Mac Jones and the Patriots. I don't think they're going to win the division, and I don't think they're going to be that formidable. And I don't think, despite what the national guys are saying, that they're going to be the team contending for the division against Buffalo. So I'm going to give Buffalo the win against the Patriots. Uh, Tampa Bay. I'm not sold on Tampa Bay. I said it once. I said it twice. I'll say it a million times. And if I had to, and it really is a guessing game, because again, I'm not going off of what I saw last year. But if I had to go off of what I think I know, and that's all I can do, I'm going to take Buffalo over Tampa Bay in that game. Uh, the Carolina Panthers. I get it. They made some moves, uh, a little bit of noise, but not enough in my opinion. Uh, I think this will be a season that's going to be basically a bridge season, uh, and they're going to find out this season what they need next season in order to get better. So I'm going to give the victory to the Bills. Uh, New England, again, I'm not sold on New England, so I'm going to give the Bills the victory. Atlanta, they're going to beat them. The Jets, that's a joke. They're going to beat them. So basically what you're looking at is a 13-4 and record for the Bills. Now, let's move on. To the Patriots, let's talk about what they got going on. Week one, Miami Dolphins. That's going to probably be, I think they're going to lose that game. I think the Patriots will lose against the Dolphins. And then you move on to the Jets. I think the Patriots will beat the Jets. They're going to move on to the Saints. This one is going to be kind of a toss-up to me. Jameis Winston, I'm not sold on him. We don't know what he's going to do. We don't know what he's going to be. Uh, you do have a scenario, again, Mac Jones, Jameis Winston, who do you believe in more? If I had to say which one I believe in more, which one's going to do better, um, I would have to say that while I'm not a fan of Jameis Winston, I think he is one up on Mac Jones right now. Doesn't mean he'll stay that way. I still think Jameis Winston's going to throw a ton of interceptions, but I think they're going to be just good enough to beat the Patriots. So I'm going to go ahead and give the Saints the victory there. Then you've got Tampa Bay. Um, this one, I'm probably going to... <sighs> Brady, first time battling against his former team. 
uh, with a quarterback who everybody says is just like Brady. Uh, again, I'm not sold on Tampa Bay. I don't think they're great. But again, I also don't think the Patriots are great. I'm going to give Tampa Bay the win over the Patriots there. Houston Texans, that should be an easy win. Basically, they're going to be a stepping stone for everybody. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys. I think that uh, this one's going to be interesting, but Dallas is going to be the better team. So I'm going to give Dallas the victory over the Patriots. The Jets, I think that obviously they'll beat the Jets. The Chargers, I think that the Patriots will lose to the Chargers. Absolutely. Herbert and the boys are going to do their thing. They're going to win that game. Carolina, I think in all honesty, this is a 50-50 toss up. I'm going to go ahead and give the Patriots the victory over Carolina. Again, I don't know how good they're going to be. I think it's a bridge season. I think this is going to be a season where they find out what they need to do next year to get better next year. Cleveland Browns, without a doubt to me, that is going to be a loss. And then moving on to the Atlanta Falcons, I don't know what Atlanta is going to be. I know we've heard some rumblings. They've made some moves. I'm still not sold on it. Um I think this one will be interesting. The Patriots, I'll give them the slight edge over Atlanta. Uh, Tennessee, again, that's going to be a loss for the Patriots. They're just not ready. They're not going to be at that level. Buffalo, again, I'm going to give Buffalo the victory over the Patriots. And then Indianapolis. I am going to give Indianapolis the victory over the Patriots. Buffalo, again, another loss for the Patriots. Jacksonville will be a victory, and the Dolphins will actually be a <sighs> tough one here. What do I think they're going to do here with the Dolphins? I think they're probably going to uh, split with the Dolphins, so I'll give it to them. So what do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we've got the Patriots are going to finish seven and ten. Now we're going to move on to the Dolphins. The Dolphins are going to play the Patriots, and I believe that's going to be a win. They're going to play the Bills. I believe that's going to be a loss. Then they're going to move on to the Las Vegas Raiders, and I believe the Dolphins will win that game. They're going to move on to the Colts after the Raiders. They are definitely going to take a loss there. They are going to move on to Tampa Bay. Uh, Tua versus Brady. This one should be interesting. I am going to give the slight advantage to Tampa Bay. So I think Tampa Bay will, in fact, beat the Dolphins. So I'm going to give them the loss there. Jacksonville is going to be a win. Atlanta is probably going to be a win. Uh, Buffalo, they're going to take the L there. And then when it comes to the Houston Texans, they are going to get the win. Baltimore Ravens, they are definitely going to take the L against the Ravens. There's no doubt about that to me. New York Jets, they're going to get the win. They're going to go up against Carolina. I believe that they are going to get the win there. New York Giants, Danny Dimes. Um, I'm not sold on New York. Um, I know they've made some moves in the offseason. I don't know how good those moves are going to be. Uh, Dolphins, Giants, I think in all honesty, this is going to be a tight game. I could see this game being a field goal victory going either way. Um, but if I had to say who was going to win this game, uh, I would have to give the slight advantage to Miami in this particular game. Next one's the Jets. I'm going to give them the victory over the Jets. The Saints, um, you know, I don't know. Again, this is so tough. Tua, Jameis, who do you believe in more? Uh, I am probably going to say that I will take the Saints over the Dolphins in this particular game. And then you got Tennessee. That's definitely going to be an L. And then you've got the Patriots. Um, I think with the Patriots, again, uh, who's it going to be? They're probably maybe going to split this series with the Patriots. Uh, they'll lose one. They'll win one. So I will give, because I believe I gave them the loss the first time they played, right? Um so, no, I gave them the win the last time they played. My bad. So, they'll take the loss here against New England. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, what that's going to do is make the Dolphins nine and eight. So, that is going to be a very, very interesting scenario we're looking at. The Jets, I mean, 
I almost don't want to do this because I don't believe in the Jets at all. Again, uh, against Carolina, they're going to take the loss. Against the Patriots, they're going to take the loss. Against Denver, they're going to take the loss. Against Tennessee, they're going to take the loss. Against Atlanta, this would be their first opportunity to get a win, and I don't think they're going to. I think they're going to take a loss. And then they're going to come out of the bye week. They're going to go up against Patriots again. They're going to take another loss. Cincinnati Bengals, this one could be interesting. I could see them fighting hard. Uh, Burrow, how good is he going to be? That's a question. How healthy is he going to be? That's a question. Um, If there was an opportunity for them to get a win, it would be against Cincinnati. So I will go ahead and give them the edge for their first victory in week eight against Cincinnati. Indianapolis, week nine, that is going to be a loss. Then you've got Buffalo afterwards. They are definitely going to lose that game. Uh, Going against Miami, that's going to be a loss. Then they're going to go against the Houston Texans. They're going to win that game without a – I just think it's going to be tight. It's going to be sloppy. Uh, But I think the edge will go to the Jets because they're going to have something to prove. They're going to be playing their hearts out. Um, They're going to try and win for the coach. Philadelphia Eagles, I honestly think that's going to be a loss. Uh, They're going to lose against the Saints. They're going to lose against the Dolphins. They're going to – it's going to be another slobber knocker of a sloppy game against Jacksonville. I'll go ahead and give them the victory there. They're going to lose against Tampa Bay. They're going to lose against Buffalo. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So, that means – they're going to go 3 and 14 on the season. So what I have is the Patriots at 7 and 10, the Jets at 3 and 14, the Bills at 13 and 4. Obviously, I have them winning the division and the Dolphins at 9 and 8. That is how I am breaking down the AFC East. So that's going to do it for today. Tomorrow we will do the AFC North, uh plus we'll talk about a couple of other things. Um Let's see what I'm doing on time here real quick, though. Actually, okay, so I got a couple of minutes left, so I am going to wrap it up. But let me talk about this real quickly. So Zach Martin caught COVID. We all know that, right? So Zach Martin caught COVID. But here's the thing. you got all the people. We talked about this yesterday. Yaysayers, naysayers, forcing people to and not forcing people to get vaccinated. That was the conversation. That was one of the things we discussed, right? So with that being said, the thing is, Zach Martin, he, by the way, is vaccinated yet he tested positive. He won't be playing in the game against the Patriots. That obviously is going to put a lot of pressure on Dak Prescott. Uh, It's going to make it harder for him. He's probably going to not necessarily be running for his life, but he's going to be running more than he would have if he had the protection of Zach Martin, right? So here's the thing. I'm only saying this really, and I'm not, again, trying to sway anybody's thought process. I'm not trying to make anybody think any way. But I'm just sharing this because, again, if we're going to find common ground, we got to look at the facts. Everybody always wants to say this is it and that is it and that's the only way it is. No, it's a very complicated thing we're discussing. So if Zach Martin is vaccinated and he tested positive for COVID, doesn't it stand a reason that he's the first of many that are going to already be vaccinated? And again, test positive for COVID. So I'm just saying the NFL needs to rethink all these restrictions they're putting on all these players that aren't vaccinated. Because again, you have players, a lot of them that are vaccinated and yet they are testing positive. My radio station that I work for, 25% of the staff has tested positive for COVID. Out of that 25% of the staff that's tested positive for COVID, almost all of them, 95% of them, have all been vaccinated, and yet they are testing positive for COVID. So, folks, it's not the people that aren't vaccinated that are spreading COVID. COVID is just something people contract. And I don't think, in all honesty, that we actually know all the different ways or all the reasons why we contract the disease. That, to me, is just an honest opinion. Because if we knew, and if being vaccinated was the key then why are all these people that are vaccinated testing positive? So the NFL's got to come up with a little bit of relief so you don't create dissension in regards to the locker rooms. Because if you have these players that can't practice and they 
can't build camaraderie because they're not allowed to be around the prayer players and they can't eat and they can't work out and they can't do all these other things with all their teammates. It could make it very difficult for teams to bond. And this could make it yet another year where we have to put an asterisk next to the Super Bowl because there were extenuating circumstances in regards to how we arrived with the two teams that play in the Super Bowl. Last year, of course, that's not the reason why. Again, I said there's an asterisk because everybody wasn't able to play hard because there was no home field advantage. There's no fans in the stands. You had glorified practices for football games. And that's just the reality of it. You did. You had the highest percentage of visiting teams win games in the history of the NFL. Why? Because there was no true home field advantage. So when you have no true home field advantage, no momentum, no momentum swings, no crowds to influence what happens in games, because that's the reason why homes games matter, right? When you don't have any of those things, then you don't know who really was the better teams last year. And I don't believe that Tampa Bay is all that that everybody believes. And if we can have minimal invasiveness from COVID-19 in regards to this football season, I believe you're going to see just how good Tampa Bay is not. They're a middle-of-the-road team. Tom Brady is not the greatest of all time. I don't know how else to say it. He was a system quarterback in a system that was made to make winners out of guys who have limited ability. That is why everybody is saying that the current quarterback, Macaroni and Cheese, is going to be so successful with the New England Patriots because – He's a system quarterback, and he's going to the right system that is designed to make a quarterback who can follow the system with limited abilities a winner. Well, I believe that's what happened to Tom Brady, and I believe last year's Super Bowl was a fluke because, again, I stated all the reasons. No fans in the stands, no momentum swings, no true home field advantage. The first time in history where you had a higher percentage of visiting teams win away games. Again, all those things aren't coincidence, folks. They're just not. All right, so that's going to do it for me today. You guys have a great day. We'll talk tomorrow. Remember, AFC North tomorrow.